All right. So hi, everyone, and welcome to What's Your Communication Style? Gosh, I sure hope that's what you're here for today, because that's where we are. Uh, we are talking about communication style, and I'm Margaret Maloney, and I am very appreciative of you um, joining today and giving me your time and attention, and I'm very happy to be able to reach out to you. And some of you who were online early, you listened to me as I was so excited like a, like a kid uh, about how many of you are here and how many places are represented. And so some of you who are curious how many people are in the webinar, we could have up to about 181 today. And right now, as our attendee list is growing, what generally happens is usually, and I'm learning, about half of the people who sign up, I'll say, are able to show up live and the rest catch up later. And so I would, I would predict, and as I'm watching the attendee count go up right now, that we'll have about 90 to 100 people today. And I could not be more thrilled. So thank you so much. Okay. And I'll say I'm your sponsor, if you will, of today's event. And I believe some of you know me that we've met, I'll say, at least online. And if not, welcome, and I'm happy to meet you now. And what I want to share with you is one of my philosophies, which is, you know, we spend a lot of time working. And a lot of you that are with me today, you're very hard workers. You might even work a lot of overtime. And you very likely might see the people you work with more often than you see your family and friends. This is kind of a state sometimes of our, our world. And the way we treat each other really makes a huge impact. And it impacts, obviously, your life, and it impacts the life of the people you're working with. And so I ask that we try to make these interactions positive. Um, my tagline, if you will, is end your day at peace, not in pieces. And if you haven't had a chance to already do so, then I would say please come visit me. My website here is on the, is on the screen here for you. Please come visit me at margaretmaloney.com. And feel free to go to the free but priceless area where I have you know things for you to take away. And I have a bi-weekly newsletter that comes out and some quotes that come out in between the newsletter to help support you in your work. So I hope that if you are new to me, that this is the beginning of a relationship for us. And for those of you who are here because you are already part of my community, I just want to thank you and tell you how much I appreciate you. Now, let's talk about how we're going to spend our time today. So the topics we're going to cover, who cares about communication? Obviously, we all do because we're together, but we're going to delve into that a little bit more. I want to get clear about what we are really discussing because communication style is really can be a very broad topic. And I have, I'll say, my own little spin if I can. And so I want to be very honest with you about what I really want us to think about today. And then we're going to talk about your influencers, meaning what influences your communication style. And we're going to talk about what can you do. So we've had this time together today. Now what? Right? What can you do? Which also leads into how to continue your growth. And I think that I have shared with most of you that I also have something, a special offer for you today that we will talk about at the end. But the most important thing is that we cover our subject matter first. So checking in with you. If this sounds good and this makes sense and this is what you're here to do, then please give me a, a big old yes or heck yes. It's a family show, so only heck. Heck yes in the question area, and I'll, I'll know that um, we are together and okay. I see yes, yes, yes. Heck yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, so I'm thanking you because I know that we are going down the right path together. And what a relief, huh? Because <laughs> what if a bunch of you said no? I guess I'd have to improvise then, wouldn't I? All right, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to see your yeses. Jumping in then. Who cares about communication? Well, I know, I'm preaching to the choir as the saying goes, because you do, because you're here with me. I don't think anybody would have signed up for this saying, I don't really care about communication, but I'm just going to go ahead and sign up for this anyway. Uh, I don't think any of you are that person. But I'm sure that you have most likely seen this 
quote before this statistic. And if you're a person studying for the PMP exam, it probably is one of those ones you filed away in your memory banks because it could come up as a question in some way or another, right? A project manager spends 90% of his or her time communicating. And so, by the way, I also have some of you with me who are business analysts and QA analysts and tech leads, and you aren't necessarily project managers, but I'm going to suggest to you that a large portion of your job is communication as well. And, you know, going back to my project managers for an example, if you create a project schedule and you do a wonderful job, and you're really good at constructing a very complex schedule with all of the dependencies and relationships. What good does that schedule do if you sit in your office in your cubicle and you don't show it to anyone? Because a schedule is meant to be a form of communication, right? It's meant to tell people what is supposed to happen and when. Let's say you're amazing with finances and you can draft up um, the most beautiful budget, so to speak, that the world has ever seen. And you know to put things in accounts properly, and you know how to you know, differentiate between capital expenses and other, and you're fabulous at it. But what does a budget really do? It tells us what you're spending and when, and as you also move forward in the project and you report against the budget, you are then saying communicating, how are we doing from a financial perspective? And so if you think of all the different things you use, create as a project manager, they're all tied to communications. Uh, because what I like to say, when you have the say-so, because I recognize that a lot of you have, you work in an industry or with a company where you are required to follow a certain approach, right? But if you're creating something and you don't know how you're going to use it, like who's going to read it and what they're going to do with it, then I want to say, why Why are we doing that? And again, understanding that there's there are times in our lives where we have paperwork, I'll say we have to create. But if you're creating something and you don't know how it's going to be used or what it's going to do to help move the project forward, I'm going to ask you to stop if you can. Okay. Now we have some quotes. And as you digest those quotes or look at those quotes, there's something I want to discuss with you. Every year, someone, or more than one person, writes an article on the top 10 reasons projects fail, or the top five reasons projects fail, or the top three reasons that projects fail. And very often, Poor communications is on the list, or it's on the list as in why we were unable to rescue a failed project. And if communications isn't on the list, so, and I actually I was looking at some the other day. Um, I was looking at an article from last year on reasons projects fail, and I think this um, one was really IT project specific. And the top five, it didn't specifically say communication, but when a reason for failure is something like poorly defined scope or lack of management support, and these are things that um, surface on the list probably every year, I want to say, but isn't that tie back to some kind of form of communication? Um, if we failed, because we had poorly defined scope, and the scope is telling us what we're supposed to be doing and what we're not supposed to be doing, to me that's a form of communication. And so if we failed because we didn't know, then we didn't, somehow we were not able to take the time to communicate in a scope document what we were supposed to be doing, or we did, we created a scope document, people never really bought into it. And if people never really bought into it, then that means somehow we, we and others, I'll say, didn't sell the project. And that's a type of communication too. So we didn't get people on board and we get people on board through communicating, inspiring, right? And so whether we say communication was one of the top five reasons that we didn't succeed or not, it's it's always on the list because it's always behind what's going on. 
on now just some thoughts on some of these quotes up here. This first one, uh, James Hume, I loved the quote. I had to go look up who he was because I didn't know. Uh, I bet some of you do know this. But apparently, he was in an Old West in the United States um, law lawmaker. And there was a infamous, during the gold rush days up in Northern California, there was an infamous um, stagecoach robber. And that stagecoach robber was named Black Bart. And James Hume is the one who um, captured Black Bart. And he is credited with being one of the first people to really show and share um, really good detective work and leadership, too. You probably know of Seth Godin because he's big in the online arena. If, if not, you, you can look him up. And uh, then this last one. Okay, not that we're all in battle, but you could easily change this quote from General Powell to say, the day your team members stop bringing you problems is the day you stop leading your team. And so that's why I left that one on there. And that ties to communication, too. That's, so we care, and this is part of the why we care. Now, I did tell you this is a really broad topic, isn't it? There's a lot to it, and so I want to be really honest with you about what we're not doing today. And it doesn't mean you can't ask me questions about some of these things later, either at the end or via, you know, some kind of communication later together. We're not discussing communications models. And so the whole, um, there's a, you know, the model of there's a sender and a receiver and an encoder and a decoder in communications. Um, that's not our purpose today. We're not talking about how to put together presentations or emails. What I really want to talk about is you. And I do mean each of you. So yes, I'm saying that to every single one of you who is with me right now or listening later. I want to talk about you. And those of you who know me, you're thinking to yourselves, oh yes, of course, because Margaret always does this. And this thing, I'll say that Margaret always does, is I ask you to look at yourself first and analyze your way of being so that you can think about how that is coming across when you're communicating. So that's what we're really doing today, okay? And uh, so I will tell you, you know what, there are a lot of ideas around communication style. So if you were to use your, and don't, don't leave me now, don't go do it now, but if you were to use your favorite search engine and look up communication styles, oh my gosh, you would find a lot of articles, ideas, assessments, good information. And I'm not discouraging you from that. I'm just asking you that before you do that, I'm asking you to step back and take a look at yourself. Take a look at yourself first. And have, you know, have you spent time understanding your own approach? Because before I go try a new approach, in order to make that approach my own, if I can say it that way, I need to understand how I behave because unless the approach I'm trying on is exactly how I already do things, I'm going to have to adjust my behavior in order to be successful with that approach, right? So that's what I'm really asking you to do. Now, some of you, I bet you some of you are really good at defining process, and that might even be part of your job. I will be honest with you and tell you I have never been great at designing process. And so those of you who design process, I really appreciate you. And I love receiving a well-created process, a process that makes sense. And I love sharing it. And I love using it. And so one of the things that comes naturally to those of you who create process and those of you who also gather requirements is you're trained to look at the as-is situation. Then you're trained to define the to be, how do we want things to be, and do a gap analysis. And one of the things I've realized 
more and more is that our work on ourselves is a process. And so, for example, how you are right now, that's your as is. And who you want to be as a leader, that's your to be. And the way to get there is to do your own gap analysis. And so more and more, I recognize that that language that we use in the workplace is language that fits how we can develop ourselves as well. So that's really what I want to talk about today. Because when I'm asking you to understand yourself, you know, I'm saying you have a natural style of communicating and you have an adapted style and it's important to understand both. Now, you know, natural style, when you get to just let your hair down, be yourself, and do things your way. That's just how you are. And your adapted style is when you are consciously changing or you might be under stress or when you're upset or angry. Um, perhaps in conflict you might communicate differently than you would, I'll say, again when all things are, are normal. Okay, And so it's important to understand both those things about yourself. And so with that thought in mind, where I want to go, and some of you were asking me about this uh, as we were getting going, is I want to talk about influencers. And so this is where, um, instead of going right to a, um, a communication style approach or a communication style survey, I'm taking you through thinking about yourself and what influences you to be you. And so what you're looking at right here, a couple of you were already asking me for um, before we started, which is what about personality type? What about personality type? Uh, and I have, I have a comment that somebody is losing audio. And so let me see. I am sorry, someone's dropping audio. And I just want to check in and make sure everyone's okay. Let me just check. Do you also have audio? Okay, some people are saying yes. So I'm Paul. I am sorry. Okay, so a lot of people are okay. So I'm sorry because I know one of you is losing audio and I don't know what it is because most of you are telling me you're okay. And so I will ask you maybe even try to reconnect. Okay. And is extrovert the same as extrovert? Yeah, and that's a spelling thing. Let's talk about that spelling thing. Great. So you're good with audio. Thank you, everyone. I just like to, when this, one person has a question, a issue, I want to make sure that it's not everybody. And it's just that one person is sharing with me. Extrovert, introvert. Let's talk about this. What I'm pulling from specifically here is your personality type. And I use Myers-Briggs and I also use Kiersey. They are both assessments. They are very similar. Um, in fact, Kiersey, uh, I'll say, based his work on the team of Myers-Briggs, the mother's daughter team. Some of you have taken one or both of these. And these are assessments that help us understand our personality type or our temperament. And in their language, they happen to spell extrovert with an A instead of extrovert, which some of us are used to seeing with an O. And these, both these personality type assessments, you answer questions and you're supposed to do it you know, quickly and from the gut. And what you and I get back when we do that is we are given a four letter description of ourselves. And today I'm just going to talk about the first letter. And the first letter in the description gives you either an E for extrovert or an I for introvert. And what that means is it has to do with how you get your energy, how you get your energy. Uh, so for example, and we're going to just go through this quickly, if you recharge by being around other people 
and you like stimulus, and maybe you don't like it to be quiet, you could be an extrovert. If you think quietly and you like time to react to information and you need time to yourself, so if you were given the choice, it's your day off and you're really tired and you want to do something to recharge yourself, if you choose to go do something, I'll say, with a group of people, you could be an extrovert. And if you say, wow, I'd really like a day by myself or maybe just a day at home quietly with the family, that could mean you're an introvert. Okay. Now, what does that have to do with communication? It has a lot to do with communication, and this is why I bring it to you for consideration. If you're an extrovert, you might think by talking. Nothing wrong with that. You might like to process information out loud. So right now, you might be talking back to me, even though I can't hear you because you're muted. Uh, you might be talking out loud and saying these things out loud as, as I'm sharing it with you. And if you're an introvert right now, you're probably thinking to yourself quietly and you're hoping or liking that wherever you're listening to this right now, it's quiet around. And how this also comes out in communication. If you're an extrovert, you might prefer to have, I'll say, a more active form of communication. You might want to walk down the hall to someone's office and see them. You might want to pick up the phone and have a conversation with them. If you're an introvert, you might prefer email. And you might prefer email because you like to think things through quietly before you share them. And you want to review your words before they come out. And if you're an extrovert, you care about what you're saying, but you also might say it a couple of times as you're processing and thinking out loud before you land on what you really meant, if I can say it that way. And so now think about, first of all, who, who do you think you are? And I don't mean that in a confrontational way, who do you think you are, but what do you think is true of you? Because this drives how we communicate. And so I'm not going to pick on anyone with us. I'm going to pick on myself here for a minute. I am an I. I like being with people. I like being able to do this. I love being able to go work, talk to groups. I also need time to recharge by myself. Like if I every day, all day long was in front of groups of people, that would be really hard for me. And so I'd work to balance my work life so I have a little bit of each. I do tend to rely on email, and to be honest with you, sometimes too heavily. And so the thing to think about in terms of communication style is, you know, are you using your approach appropriately? Because see, my go-to, first of all, you know, as a person who grew up in information technology and being an introvert, I like email. It lets me think before I share something. I can look at it for a little bit. I can send something. I can pull it up later and look at the exact words I typed. But there was a time uh, I'm going to share with you. Some of you have heard this story, so I, I thank you for listening to this story again. Whereas I uh, went up the ranks and um, I got to a position, and I'll say it was kind of like, for lack of, for looking for a common title, I'll say like a director level. And I was emailing, and my peers were all people in different business units. I was now working more with people outside of IT. Well, I used to email them all the time. And one of them stopped me in the hallway one day, and here's what he said to me. He said, you know, Margaret, my office, it's right below yours. You're on the third floor, I'm on the second floor. We could cut a hole in the floor, and we could put in a pole and pretend we were firemen and go up and down the pole and see each other. You could throw down a, you know, a tin can and a string, and we could play telephone. Um, why don't, but here's what he's trying to say, say to me. Why do you always email me? Why don't you ever come to see me? And so in this instance, my go-to style was impacted by the fact that I was an introvert and I preferred email, but it was damaging our relationship. And so what I have had to learn is, you know, there are times when you need to go down the hall to see someone or to the other floor or pick up the phone and that email isn't always fabulous for everyone. I'm going to just check in for a minute and see how you're all doing and make sure this is making sense.
and see if you have any questions about that. Okay, you all appear to be doing well. Fabulous, and you know that you can ask any question anytime. Uh, something else to think about when you're leading meetings. You're going to be an either an E or an I, and you're going to have team members who are one or the other. And as you get to know your team members, you want to think about this because, for example, something, another thing with us introverts, we don't always like to be, I'll say, put on the spot. And we want to think ahead of time. And so in a team meeting, if you suspect somebody's an introvert, you may not call on them to just give an off-the-cuff presentation because it might bother them. But if you have someone who you suspect is an extrovert, they might love to do that. And uh, so you could think, okay, so let's look at something. Here's a question. If my director is an E and I am an I who prefers written communications, could this cause problems? Yes, it can. And sometimes when we have communication problems, it's not intentional. And sometimes when we come from a place of different styles, I'll say we annoy one another. And now the other thing, those of you who work with me or are a part of my community, you know, because we can't change other people, I ask you to look at yourself first. Not that you should have to change all the time, but can you make a change? You know, so in the story I told you when that person said to me, hey, Margaret, you know, I sit right below you. Why don't you come see me? I made some changes, and I really realized that I needed to make part of my day going out and communicating with my peers and going to see them and not always emailing them. Um, so if you have somebody who um, doesn't, pref you prefer written and they don't, I'm not going to say stop putting things in writing because we know there's value to putting things in writing. But what might be useful is if you're an I and you like things in writing, and you're working with an extrovert who doesn't, is that you write it down for your benefit. And when you meet with them, perhaps you summarize and you work off of the written document and you give them the high points and give them the written document if you want it. And that way you have a way to, I'll say, meet in the middle. Uh, because there's no part of this conversation where I'm going to say, because of this, we should stop signing project documents because I don't believe that to be true, because that's just going to lead to another issue of miscommunication, don't you think? So thank you for that question. Let's look at another influencer. What about your conflict resolution mode? Uh, some of you have had a chance to be with me as we've spoken about conflict resolution modes, or perhaps you've had a chance to read about it. And this is how you handle conflict and how you handle conflict impacts how you communicate. And so I'd like to give you some examples. Okay, if you come from, a, and so what we have here, what you have here on the screen is the different modes. So I'm gonna talk about them. So if you come from a place of competing, which means you kind of view a conflict like a competition, for lack of a better word, you might come from an approach of telling people how things are. Your communication approach in that situation might be, I'm going to tell you how things are. And you might do that because your thought process in a conflict is, how can I win? How can I get people to do things my way? And so that's going to show up in your language, whether it's in writing or, or verbal, right? If you come from a place of collaborating, the words and way in which you communicate is based on wanting to work with the other person to find a solution. And so your communications will have a tone of, you know, we can win together if we work together. You might be assertive, but not demanding. So you'll be saying, wow, I really think we should work together. I really think if we put our heads together, it's going to benefit us. When we put our combined expertise together, we're going to come up with a better approach and you're going to really want to make sure that issues are addressed, and so your language will be very clear and assertive in terms of, let's make sure we are addressing everything. And so you might drive communications, as in lead the communications or spearhead the communications, or you might let others drive, and might what might um, impact, I'll say, your t the tone you take, whether you, I'll say, drive the communications or let someone else does, is whether or not you see someone else taking charge 
or what you perceive your role to be. But uh, you're gonna, your communications are going to reflect your willingness to work with others. Okay? If you come from a place of compromising, your approach, your communication is going to come across as in you are wanting to find out what the other party is willing to give to reach a solution. So your tone is going to be all about, here's what I'm willing to give, what are you willing to give? And if you perceive that the other person wants to take the lead, as part of your compromising approach, you may allow them to take the lead. And so your communication style might reflect that you're treating them as the leader in the communication. Now, if you come from a place of accommodating, your communications are going to come across based on your willingness to concede or give to what the other party wants. Um, so you're not going to come across as very assertive, and the words and the style you use won't be very assertive. You're going to uh, show that you're letting someone else be in charge, and so you might be very, I'll say, conciliatory, um, respectful. Now, this doesn't mean you weren't respectful in the other styles, but you might be careful to communicate in a way that lets them know that you are respecting them as the leader, that you are not trying to step into their turf. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And now we have a question, so let's look at this question here for a second. And our question is, what happens when you are presented with a competing mode of conflict revolution even when, resolution even when you prefer collaborating? Ah. My first question to you is, who is the computer? Is it your boss? And if it's your boss, should you allow them to uh, use their approach over yours? If it's not your boss, what is the nature of the conflict? And does it matter? Now, of course, the conflict matters. But what I mean is, does it matter which approach we use? And if that person is a computer and they feel really strongly that they want to have their way, if their way makes sense, or it's a small enough issue that you can um, concede to them, which sometimes can be a relationship builder, then do so. But if their being a computer could lead you down the wrong path, then you're going to need to find a way to be assertive and uh, drag, and not drag them, I shouldn't say it that way, bring them into a place of collaboration. So thank you for that question. Now, what if you come from a place of avoiding? What is your communication style going to be like then? I want to say non-existent. If you're avoiding, you don't want to have any communications about the conflict at all. And so your communications will be absent, ignoring the issue at hand, not dealing with it, not communicating about it unless you have to. Because if you come from a place of avoiding conflict, you don't want to. Don't want to, can't make me, is how you feel. Okay, so that is how your approach to conflict shows up in how you communicate. So that's another important influencer. Let's look at another. I'm asking you to think about something else. How do you learn or process information? How do you learn or process information? So for example, we have Three examples here. We have auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. Kinesthetic. Let's look at each one of these right now. If you are auditory, you're a listener. You're a listener. So now here's my here's an auditory person right here. I love this. Here's somebody with a question. Will this recording be available after today? Perfect timing. Thank you. I will give you a million dollars of air money. Remember that's air money. Okay, so it's you can receive it right now. Um, because, yes, this recording is going to be available after today. It's going to be available to you in a couple of days. I'm going to send you the link where you will all be able to access it. And uh, see the fact that you said recording, it could be you're an auditory person, it could be a visual person. If you are an auditory person, listening works best for you. You like to hear things. Uh, now, 
in life, we tend to be a combination of the three, but we tend to have one area that's our major area of emphasis. So right now, if you are listening and you are not looking at the screen or you even have your chair turned around or your back turned around and you are just listening to my voice, you are coming from a place of being auditory. And that means when you communicate, you probably prefer communications to be something that can be listened to, something out loud, right? And so you might go to that approach. What if you're visual? Then you need some kind of visual stimuli. Uh, so my friends, those of you who are with me right now and you come more from a place of being visual, if I didn't have slides, that might really bother you. So if we did this today as a teleconference and not as a webinar with some kind of visual, you might not even have signed up. Or it might be harder for you to pay attention because you like to have that visual representation. And so when you communicate, you probably want to have a prop something, a whiteboard, something to hang on, you know, show people, um, PowerPoints, some other kind of presentation, because that's what works best for you. If you are kinesthetic, you like to do something for information to sink in. And maybe that seems like a little less applicable right now, because I'm not giving you any, like, activities to do. Uh, at the end, though, we are going to talk about some steps you can take. And it might be that when you start applying those steps that what we're talking about today will really make sense. Or later today, if you attend a meeting or tomorrow, and in the midst of that meeting, because you'll be doing something, this might kick in more. Because a kinesthetic person needs to do. And where that will show up is... You, when you're communicating, this is going to sound funny, you might use your hands a lot. You might like actually to hold something. Uh, I know I come from a place of being more kinesthetic, and I have this thing I do. And I think it's weird, so feel free to think I'm weird. It's okay. If you come to talk to me, let's say we're in the office together, and we're in the hallway, and you came to talk to me about something, and it was on the piece of paper, like you had a piece of paper you were holding, and you were talking to me about that piece of paper, I would reach over and probably take that piece of paper from you. In the past, I used to not even know I was doing it. And I didn't mean to be like, you know, grabby, like, Ugh, give me your paper. It was just like part of who I am that I had to be like touching this thing while we were talking about it. And that's because sometimes I'm highly kinesthetic. Um, how that comes out, you know, so that's one way that shows up in me. And another way for you to think about it is how this shows up is, you know, when you're doing presentations, do you like to have people in the room do something active? And it's particularly good, those of you who do a lot of speaking and training. All right. So those three, how you learn or process information, they pop right out back up again in how you communicate. Because many of us, our first go-to is what we like. And so that's how that's going to show up in the way you do things. All right. So these are some of your key influencers that I'm asking you to consider about. Because remember today, I'm asking you to really think about who you are in terms of how you communicate. And so I'm asking you to take a look at your temperament or personality type, how you resolve conflict, how you learn or process information, because that's what is driving the decisions you're making when you communicate. And that's what will drive you as you select a style. <clears throat> now, how do you know? So let's go through... How do you know? Take a look at yourself and think. What is your go-to style? When you have something to share, and you might do this differently, whether it's to a single person or to a team. Certainly you might behave differently at home than at work. Right now, our focus together right now is at work. What is your go-to? Uh, when you have the choice, what are you going to do naturally? Are you going to walk down the hall if you can actually physically see someone? Because in our world, so many of us are virtual, right, like we are all today. Are you going to pick up the phone? Is your first thought, let me pick up the phone? Are you like me and your first thought is, 
let me draft an email? Are you going to call a meeting? Is sometimes your first thought, let's get a group together and talk about it together. And then is that meeting going to be in person or virtual? Again, if you had a choice. And if you don't know right now, that's okay. Because the idea today is you can know. And so I'm asking you to, you know, pay attention to yourself and look at, as you're communicating outwardly, jot down some notes as to what you're doing and why you're doing it. So what can you do? Um, so we've been sharing, you know, a lot of information here. And this is what I think. I think a lot of what I'm saying to you, I'm not saying anything complicated. But I think the path to learning it could be complicated. The path to learning it could be complicated. And so I want to give you some steps to consider. Get to know yourself. And getting to know yourself really means paying attention. Watch yourself, like you know, standing back and watching yourself when you're in um, communications. And where are you gravitating? And do some work to figure out a little bit about your personality type, a little bit about your conflict resolution mode, uh, about your learning style, and other factors that you can think of that influence how you. So be clear, and then that means be clear about your influencers, because that's what's pushing you in the direction you go. Review your communications. So I'm going to say look at some recent and some past communications that you had and think about how successful were they. Did they go well? Did they not go as well as you wanted them to? And why? Think about where you were coming from when that happened. And this is not like beat yourself up day. If a communication didn't go well, it's a lesson learned. And I'm asking you to think about it objectively. Um, I'm asking you to think about it objectively. What happened? Is it because uh, I was, you know, like my example, I was sending emails to people who didn't want emails. They wanted me to build relationships with them and see them and talk to them in person. What was happening? And what was pushing you in that area? And then do some analysis. How could you have improved? And that isn't, again, to beat yourself up. That's so that you can use that information in the future. And pay attention to communications that you feel really good about, like what went well, right? Because that's information you want to capture and capitalize on. So when things went well, you want to do that again, right? And so capture what went well, who was the audience, what did you do, and plan. When our communications don't go the way we wish they would, you know, a lot of times it's because we didn't think it through ahead of time. So one of you shared with me earlier, you know, the fact, um, could it be that the fact that my boss is an E and I'm not, could that be causing problems? And I'm, I'm paraphrasing the question. It could. And now that you know it, as much as possible, how can you plan for when you're going to interact with your boss so that you can satisfy your need to be you and also your boss's needs. And so if you think ahead of time, and speaking of communicating, we should never forget to ask. Ask others. Another thing I say, and again, I appreciate your patience if you've heard me say it before, or you've read, read it, is ask people their preferences. So ask someone, you know, what I need to, to communicate with you, what do you prefer? Do you want me to email you? Do you want me to call you? Do you want me to come to your office? What do you prefer? And then whenever possible, I'll say cater to that. But if you ask, then you need to honor their preferences. So if you have no intention of honoring their preferences, do not ask, because that's going to make them more annoyed with you. Now let's have a question. Does one's cult culture influence how you communicate? Sure it does. Sure it does. Um, another thing I, I didn't go into as much today is a, the way I say it is wherever you go, there you are. And what I mean by that is we are all built from all these different things, where we were born, 
you know, uh, how we were raised, whether we accepted how we were raised or not, how we are expected to behave in our, I'll say, our culture, our societal culture and our corporate culture. It does. And so if you've ever, so I'm going to take it back to the workplace for a minute. If you've ever had somebody new come to the workplace and they're different and it's not working, it could be because their way of doing things is different and that most of you do things the same way and this person comes in and they don't and it just is weird at first and they do things and it startles all of you and if they don't pay attention to the culture they might not do very well right so the answer is yes I want to do a, a pulse check right now did we cover so far have we covered what we set out we said we were going to talk about who cares about communications that we were going to become clear about what we were really discussing and influencers and what you can do. So I just want to check in with you. And I'm getting some yeses, and that's what I'm looking for, is to make sure we're covering what we meant to cover. Yes. Beautiful. Good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, C. I appreciate your feedback, your good communication with me. Thank you. And my introverts agree, and my extroverts agree. My apologies to my extroverts, because doing this via chat must be really hard. I wouldn't know, me, this I here. Okay. Let's talk about how to continue your growth. That was like the remaining, the remaining topic. Again, take the time, please, to really think about your preferences. Take the time to really review when your communications have been successful. And then you see I have when the dot, 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 when the dot, 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 which means sometimes I'm not as successful as I want to be. I want to rethink about that. Analyze the information. Make a plan to grow forward. This is, you know, part of your growth. Make a project plan for yourself. What am I going to do uh, to improve my communications? What am I going to do to become more effective? First step, you know, is again getting to know yourself. If we had more time or we moved on, we would probably have some conversation about now what do I do about getting to know other people? What do I do about flexing my style, right? So that's what I would ask you to do. I also have something I want to share. So I promised you at the end I was going to share something with you. Um, so today I have something brand new that I'm launching really seriously today. And it's called Mitigate Yourself. What to do when the risk is you. And this is something I've created for you to help with this process. To help with our self-development. Okay? And let's just take a look. So really, truly, brand new today, just launching, and, but what is it? I might want to know that. Like, what is it? What is this thing I'm telling you about? Hang on, let me just tell you. Okay, <clears throat> it's a program. It is a self-study program. That means it's something you can take away, you download it. Okay, so you, it's not... I'm going to use the word purchase because it's not something I'm giving away for free. It's something you can purchase and you download. And the sections of it, here are the sections. Who do you think you are? And again, that's not meant to be controversial, but it's meant to take you through the steps of what's your personality type? What's your conflict resolution style? How do you deal with difficult people? Um, what about your professional brand? Who do you want to be? How are you perceived? And so the first step is, who do you think you are taking you through some approaches to use to really do some of the self-discovery I'm asking you to consider. Then next section is who do others think you are? Because remember I said you can ask. And so I'm going to lead you down the path and the steps of how do you find out what others think? Which now takes you to who do you want to be? And earlier today, remember we talked about the as is and the to be and the gap analysis. This is another way of doing it. And so it's a program where I'm saying, do a risk analysis on yourself. Remember um, that a risk is a positive or a negative. So I'm not saying, ooh, you're a risk. That's a bad thing. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. I'm asking you to consider it all. Consider it all. And one of you has dealing with difficult people and you enjoy it. I'm so glad. Thank you. And um, in this, there's like, I'll say, a subset of information that's about dealing with difficult people. But if you already have dealing with difficult people, then you have, I'll say, the master program for dealing with difficult people. I'm glad you're enjoying that. Uh, there's a section called Managing the Risk Called You. 
And the purpose of that section is to bring together your analysis of who do you think you are, what do others think, and who do you want to be, to help you understand your, tr I call them triggers, and in risk management we call them triggers too, which is the behaviors you exhibit right before you do something. Now that something could be right before you do something good, in which case you want to capitalize on that, right? But it could also be the tr behaviors you exhibit right before you do something you wished you hadn't have done. And so that you'd capture that. Uh, and then we have a section for you to create your project plan. That's your personal development plan. That's, again, taking out all of this information together and mapping out. And so one of the first things in your project plan might be um, learning to work with an extrovert when you're an introvert or, for my extroverts, to give you fair radio time here or video time, learning to work with those introverts. How do I get them to speak up in meetings? Uh, how can I get them to be more willing to tell me what they're thinking, right? And so part of your project plan is how are you going to, I, use, I like to use the phrase, grow forward, and I'm sure I cannot take credit for grow forward. I'm sure I'm not the only person who says it. And then there is a, a bonus chapter on dealing with difficult people. That's what this program is, okay? That's what this is. And so, again, so but what does that really mean? It's comprehensive, and not a quick fix. Like, I wouldn't think you would use this and say, let's say you started doing this Friday and that you'd be done by Sunday. Uh, all of our timelines are going to be different. What I want to put out there again, you know, earlier today I talked about um, processes and we're all a process, right? I think we are. Our, who we want to be, we're our works in process. And so how long will this take you? Could take you three months, could take you six months. It's not a quick fix. I'm not giving you something and saying, here, if you take this by Monday, you will be perfect in all ways. <laughs> because I don't know. That it's a different answer for all of us. But what is really what are you really receiving with this? There's an ebook, and that ebook is like your your map. That's your basis to how to walk through all of this, how to really figure out who do you think you are where to go for the information, what to do, what to do with it. And then there's some audios uh, for you to listen to. So my auditory people, if you prefer to listen, then there are a couple of sections that are recorded so you can listen to them instead of reading them. And then my visual people, there are videos so that you can watch information on some of the sections. Like there's a video on dealing with difficult people. Um, there's a, a video on conflict resolution. And so all of this comes together, but again, it's something that's 100% um, downloadable. You download it, and you save the page, and you go to it, and that's what you use, okay? Why would you do this now? Why wait? <laughs> why would I be putting off, um, I'll say, why would I put off improving my ability to work with others? Why would I give away my competitive edge? And you know I'm, I'm big on the soft skills, right? And so that's why when you come to my webinars, you're going to be most likely on a topic that's about a soft skill. So that's what this is about. And I did promise you, for being with me, a special offer. And that is just, and I'm not kidding, this is only for those of you who are signed up for this webinar. I'm not publicizing this, which is, uh, this is a $49 package. But because you're with me, you get 20% off. And that 20% off ends Thursday at 11.59. So we don't have to be confused about midnight. Are we talking about which day? 20% off. So that makes it more like, instead of $49, I think it makes it like $39.20. And I'm not kidding. I'm not extending this to anyone who didn't sign up for today. So this is my thank you because I appreciate you being with me. And if you were ever not happy, I would always give you your money back. And that's true with all of the things that I offer you. Now, today was free, so don't ask me for money back for today because this was free. <laughs> but I hope that you have been enjoying your time. I certainly have really been enjoying being with you, and I really, again, appreciate your trust in your brain space. And so how would you do this? And you'll receive this information, but 
if you go to margaretmaloney.com forward slash mitigate yourself dot html, that's where you will find more information on this. And if you use, there's a code mitigate20, that's your special 20% discount code. And again, that's just for you. So that's how. And so if you're interested, check it out. And if this is the right time, and I hope it is the right time for you, then go for it and get that 20% off. Why shouldn't you? Because that's my, my thank you for you being here. Ah, my questions. I love when you ask me questions because you remind me of things I wanted to tell you, so thank you so much. Can this be used as PDUs for PMPs? Yes, absolutely. In fact, this program is for PDUs. Now, they're the self-directed studying because this program you won't be doing live. Those of you who are with me today, you get a PDU for being here today. And if you're here right now, if you've been listening, you're attending, then you get the PDU for you know, attendance. And if you're my people who are listening to this later, then you get the self-directed PDU. So one PDU for today. And the Mitigate Yourself program is worth four PDUs. And so it helps you on multiple fronts. It's going to make you a stronger, more powerful leader. You're going to really understand yourself. And by the way, our talk today on communication style, that came right from the Mitigate Yourself program. So if you're curious about what kinds of things are we going to talk about in the program, the what's your communication style is a part of that program. Before I have to say goodbye for the day, which is always the sad part, I want to make sure that all of your questions about everything we set out to do today have been addressed. So please, questions about communication style, questions about anything, please let me know. Oh, thank you. I appreciate this. You have been clear as usual. I really appreciate that comment, especially as I'm talking to you about communication. It is extra important for me to really be aware of what I'm doing, don't you think? So thank you. Anyone else? Other questions? Thoughts? Are there ways that I can be of service to you today? An introvert who enjoys your periodical email. Or thank you, my introverts. And I'm glad that you like my voice. Your voice, oh, thanks. Your voice smiles as much as your text. I'm going to treasure that comment all day. I really appreciate that one. You know, I smile because I like what I do and I enjoy being with you. Um, do I have an associated provider ID and activity ID? Still on the PDU side of it. Okay. Um, so where do we get the information needed for the PDUs? I'm not a registered education provider, um, but you know that I, you can still claim PDUs for someone who isn't on the PD, uh, PMI registered education provider list and so what you will do and the information will is on the page if you purchase the product the information for how to claim your PDUs comes to you a couple of times it's on the page where you pick up your product and I think we also email it to you and it'll say use this category claim this many PDUs um, claim them in this in these sections here's the name of the provider which is me and my business address so that you will have all of that and I'm glad those of you who have, uh, I'm getting thank yous for the webinar, and I'm glad that it was useful to you because um, what I love, one of the one of the things I love in life is supporting you. And uh, that's what I've learned about myself in my journey is I really love supporting you so that you can have the best experiences at work, and then in turn you're going to bring the best experiences to your people as well. Right, and hopefully now I've answered the questions about the PDUs because those are important questions. So, did I answer your PDU questions? Can it be a, a category C instead of an A? Yes. I can. Thank you. Okay, what happens next? Within the next couple of days, you're going to receive an access to the recording so that you can listen to it again or use it again. And you will receive a certificate of attendance for this session. And I have a question about the PDU data. Okay, so for this session, you will earn one PDU. And you will be emailed. There I go again with that crazy email. Uh, you will be emailed a certificate that tells you that it's one PDU. 
and what category to use to claim it, and who is the provider, which is me, the name, and the business address, so you have the right information to give the PMI. And the same would be true if you move forward with the Mitigate Yourself Package program, which I really hope you do, because I really, to be honest, I really put that together with all of you in mind and with an idea for, I have all these separate programs where you go intense on emotional intelligence and conflict, and I uh, wanted this to take that information and help you integrate it. And this is going to be translated. Yay, thank you. I'm happy for those of you who are listening are going to translate this. And, oh, I have my first order. That's so exciting. So I have somebody saying, thank you, I just ordered. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. And please let me know how you enjoy the program. I'm thrilled, 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 thrilled. So now it's that time. It's two minutes after the time where I have to say goodbye. But I will stay with any of you who have further questions until you are gone. Um, are these slides available? You're going to receive them in the form of a video. So you're going to actually get a recording of this that's a video. And if you have a preference for just the slides, please uh, send an email to info at margaretmaloney.com and we will make sure you get just the slide set if you want the slide set separate of the video. Can this program be used with my staff? Can I just say yes, please? Um, because what a nice opportunity if you can take this sit your staff down and together watch the video and pause it and talk and share and share about your preferences this could be a team building tool and so if you do use it with your staff please let me know how that goes because I would be very excited for you okay so we've got all the slides available downloading the certificate of the attendance email uh, you will be receiving an email directly that gives you your certificate of attendance What else? What a nice group you've been. Again, as uh, I'll say more and more of you jump off because it's our time to close, I just want to say thank you again very much. Thank you again very much. And I will, like I say, stay and answer questions until you have no more questions. Can I get the email required again to have a copy of the slides? Yes. The email. Let me chat that in the email. I should have done that earlier. Thank you for asking me that again. Here you go. Info, and I've chatted it, so hopefully you see it. Info at margaretmaloney.com for requesting the slides. And then what I will do is get you a PDF file of the slides. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the encouraging words. I am planning to do more webinars this year, and so you please also feel free to send ideas to info at margaretmaloney.com. I'm really enjoying that this gives us a chance for us all to reach out and work together. So if you have ideas for topics, let me know, because I'm going to be doing webinars throughout the year. Sometimes they'll be like today, um, where there'll be, you know, there'll be no charge. Sometimes I'll have webinars that'll be classes that I'll ask you to, to pay a charge for. But either way, we will all find a way to interact. So thank you for your encouragement. 